this twisted leaf yucca, or yucca rupacola. And the roots of various species of yucca have been used by many native peoples of the Southwest historically as a soap, especially for washing hair and wools. And I've used the roots of this as a soap various times and it works pretty well. I'll show you how to do it. Digging with a pointed hardwood stick such as mesquite here is also a, a traditional method of hunter-gatherers around the world. leaves also have a ton of use for fibers. There are many different species were uh, boiled and bruised with the stone or chewed up and to extract the fibers. You want to take out the outer sheath and the uh, latitudinal fibers and you're left with quite a bit of nice strong fibers that can be used for cordage and bowstrings and nets. I need these for making a bowstring. So I'll be using all of this. The whole leaves would also be used for thatching and a basketry. And these parts right here can actually be used for soap. The root can be pretty hard to dig all the way out, but it's not necessary. You just gotta take what you need. Now, I am killing this plant, so you want to uh, make sure there's plenty other species of other individuals in the area if you're going to do that this plant is extremely common twisted leaf yucca yucca rupicola it's extremely common in my area so i'm not worried about it but it's also nice to give thanks to the plant with an offering let's see how much i can cut out without needing to dig further because this is just straight limestone good chunk left in there. I might still be able to dig that out. But all of this will be usable as soap. So you want to take off the bark and then you can crush it up or bruise it in water and then you just lather it up and use that lather as a soap. The Comanche would take parts of uh, yucca guaca or soapweed, gua soapweed yucca and dry them and then just put the dried pieces in water when they're on the go to use the soap and the Diné or Navajo did something similar. The Cherokee actually used uh, pieces of yucca root for uh, fish poison and so this might be able to use, be used similarly. The plant contains a lot of saponins which are Basal form of soap. So you can see it's pretty juicy there. You just need a small piece, and it's really good for washing the hair or woolens. Even after commercial soap was introduced, uh, it was preferred for washing hair and woolens. I'll be using all of this. So the the leaves have been used for lashings, for pole construction of houses and stuff, from the various species of yucca. Uh, the leaves of yucca glauco were also bound together to make a drill with the pointy part down. I imagine maybe cutting it flat. The juice of yucca leaves has been used as a binding agent or fixative for mineral charcoal or plant pigments. 
and is extracted uh, by heating the leaf over a fire and wringing it out. Uh, the leaves were used by the Apache to tie grass to the feet as a, an emergency footwear. The points have been used as uh, a needle by the Dakota, Kiowa, Omaha, Pawnee, and Ponca, and the Comanche would make a brush comb combo out of them by tying together the sharp ends to use for the comb and then pounding up the other ends to use as a brush. And for the sharp ends, they would singe the points so they're not quite as sharp. Yuccas also had many food uses, so the fruits of certain species were eaten, basically the ones which have pulpy fruits, especially dato or yucca bacata. And the flowering stalks of various species were eaten, uh, especially in early spring when they're just emerging. And the, the flowers of several different species were eaten. I've tried the flowers of this one, the twisted leaf yucca. They're pretty good. I've tried a few different species of flowers and they do have a slight uh, bitter taste, but if you batter them and fry them, they're really good that way. And the flowering stalks are best when cooked for a while, so you can't eat them raw, but they were mostly cooked in an earth oven for you a know, short time or overnight. And they've also been sliced and, and parboiled or just boiled or sliced and dried to preserve. And the seeds were occasionally eaten, but that's pretty rare. I'm not very confident about the use of the seeds, but definitely the pulp of, especially of yucca bacata, was very important food source and even a trade item of various tribes in the, the Southwest. And for that, there's this fleshy pulp in between the outer rind and the seeds, and it's very sweet, and that was extracted. and and sun-dried or it could be baked first and then extracted and then dried and then turned into a meal and formed into cakes and those cakes could be broken off into a water or a stew and made into like a sweet syrup or additive to a, a soup and it, uh, even the hearts of some yucca species have been eaten similar to how agave is processed you may have heard about it. agave and used for tequila so they cut off all the outer leaves and then you're left with this sort of inner core you can kind of see it here you know basically where it starts there from the base and if you removed all the leaves what would be left uh, obviously the species would be too small to make much use of and usually yuccas are too dry to really uh, use too fibrous in that way but i've read that some species of yucca the hearts were, were baked in the earth oven for a while and then taken out and then sun-dried and then sliced and eaten by the Apache and the the tenor, tender inner leaves of yucca bacata were also apparently cooked and eaten by the Apache. So this is an old flowering stalk of twisted leaf yucca, yucca rupicola. And the, the, the flowering stalks of various species of yucca have been eaten historically by the Apache and Cahuila and the they were mostly eaten when emerging in early spring, so before they flowered, and when they're only about you know this tall is when I've tried them. And I just cooked them in the oven wrapped up for uh, a few hours, and they turned out pretty nice, kind of like asparagus. Yucca glauca was eaten by the Apache after flowering, but that was roasted in an earth oven overnight, and then the outer part was removed, and the sweet inner part was eaten. So that, that has bigger flowering stalks. Flowering stalks is often used as a, a hearth board for friction fire starting. So that's what is on the ground and what you're drilling into. These are you know, gonna be too small to really use for that, but they've also been used by the Diné or Navajo as the, the drill and fire friction starting. So they have a really uh, soft wood that holds fire well. In fact, they were used as a punk by the Kiowa. And so I imagine this one can be used similarly. This one's already broken off. I'm going to take it home and try it for that. But the, the way the Diné used it would be to just take a small piece of it and attach it to a, an, an arrow shaft. So you have this at the tip of it and then use that as your fire drill. They actually have edible flowers. But they don't taste too wonderful, but don't really have a bad taste. Just a slight astringency. And 
they're even better cooked. So you can batter them and deep fry them. It makes a really cool, tasty food.